what we are experiencing today and in the world, there's a lot of issues, there are a lot of challenges in waste management, more so the human waste. If I take a case of the Kenya, or, or if I take an example of Kenya, where we are, it's only 22% of the population who are covered by the sewer-based networks, meaning that 78% are not covered. So this issue is how do we help the 78% of the population manage their waste in a safe, sustainable, and cost-effective way. That is the initiatives that I'm leading here at the Mary University of Science and Technology. Uh, in the recent past, have come up with an innovation which I would call a warm-based sanitation innovation, whereby I'm involving the community for their waste management. In this particular technology that I'm calling warm-based, I'm using the black soldier fly. This is what I'm referring to as my warm. Uh, of the 78% of the population who are using the on-site sanitation systems in Kenya, these people are getting a lot of challenges when it comes to the treatment of the fecal waste which is so generated. The on-site system include the pit latrines and septic tanks and these have no different treatment for the waste which is being produced. In the recent past, we've seen innovations like the CBS system. This is the container-based sanitation system which has been developed. In this particular system, the waste is collected in a container which is then transported to some central treatment place. Of late, we've seen challenges of the container-based sanitation system in terms of the operational cost. So if you have to collect the waste on a daily basis from the place of generation to the treatment site, this hands up to you incurring a huge cost, especially in the transportation. So we've decided to come up with innovation which will help us trim on the transportation cost for this. So in our system, which I'm calling the warm-based sanitation system, we are, call, we are still using the container-based sanitation, but the, the, ones which is, the one which is incorporating the urine, diverting, dehydrating system. So in this particular system, what normally happens, the fecal waste and the urine are collected in two separate containers. So what we have at the university is we have a conversion unit whereby we are managing this particular waste. We have a unit where we are railing the black soldier fly, which we are using for our treatment. So in our black soldier fly herding unit, you ha we have two centers, one for the production, whereby we feed the, the larvae with the waste. Then we also have another one, which no we normally call the hatchery, where we have, the, we have retained the adult flies for the purpose of laying the eggs. So in a warm-based container system, we normally precede the containers that we supply to the community with worms, which are about, which are about uh, 80 days old. The purpose of using worms which are 80 days old is that they are in very active stage of feeding. So when we feed the containers with this particular worm and we take them to the community, what happened and why I like this system is that immediately the waste has been produced is very active conversion overnight. So by the following day, the BSF has already converted the waste that was, pre that was produced the previous day. So for this particular system, we normally allow the containers to stay within the households for 12 days. Within these particular days, our larvae has developed, has matured, and the waste which was produced has been converted to larvae, which has already grown. So. After the 12 days, we go and collect the, 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 the pre-converted misks, which we bring to the university's processing facility, whereby we use a solar dryer. So we have simple, cost-effective solar dryers, whereby when we bring in our waste, we only expose it to the solar dryer for a period of about five days. Within this particular period, we normally do some quality checks, where we buy, we, whereby we normally check for the pathogens. For the pathogens that we normally check, it's the ascalis, and also we do some E. coli test. In addition, the solar dryer normally enhances the drying of the larvae. After the drying period of five days, we normally remove our black soldier fly larvae, and this is dry, which is also combined with the, the residue, which is our compost manure, and we do a separation. When we separate the two components, the two streams of the products, that is the residue, which is the compost and the larvae, we normally have the compost 
as a fertilizer for our farms. And then for the larvae, we normally take it to a further step of processing feeds for poultry or chicken.